Four years ago today, Shanann tests Chris Watts in bed. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Does sex equal love? When you think about it, it feels like for Shanann, Chris Watts and Nicole Kessinger, all three young 30-somethings, sex equals love. Watts was head over heels with Kessinger after a six-week full-on affair with his co-worker. Kessinger was in love with Watts as well, telling her friend Charlotte at 2.49.02 p.m. on Sunday, August 12th. Ha ha, yeah, it's the best sex I've ever had. I'm hooked. And on August 7th, just five days earlier, Shanann decided to put Watts' week-long standoffishness to the test. On the night they arrived back home on, from North Carolina, Shanann tried to have sex with Watts. At 07.24 a.m., first thing the very next morning, Shanann told Sarah the outcome of this um, attempted um, amorous contact, right? And sh- so Shanann told Sarah that Watts had rejected her. She also admitted kicking his sorry ass out of bed and told him not to come home until he could tell her the damn truth. This is obviously a huge escalation in their relationship that takes place the moment they arrive home from North Carolina. Before we get to the rest of this analysis, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment. If you're enjoying this coverage, be sure to hit the thanks icon. And let's get started. Now, in the previous uh, hashtag four years ago CW analysis I did, and bear in mind if you want to discuss it on Twitter, use that hashtag, I mentioned a misconception that Watson never asked his wife for a divorce, never communicated anything in that direction when clearly he had. Clearly even his parents knew about it. And it's because he did tell Shanann and because he was acting differently toward her, purposefully and deliberately, which was another way he was communicating with her as well, that Shanann felt sick to her stomach. Those are her words. And that's on the morning of the 8th of August. If we're talking about gut feel, being sick to your stomach, that something is wrong, is about as on the chin as gut feels go. Shanann was right to feel sick to her stomach. She was right to feel anxious. In any event, if sex equals love in this love triangle, well then clearly at this point, Watts and his mistress are feeling it and having it, having it and feeling it while Watts and his wife aren't. And on paper, it is a serious warning sign. Watts hasn't seen his wife in six weeks. With all things being equal, shouldn't his libido be acting up? Hers is. Why isn't his? Well, we know why. And that brings us to another huge misconception in this case. If Watts didn't uh, want to sleep with Shanann during the entire week together in North Carolina, and he refused and rejected Shanann once again when they got home, five days before the incident, then why on earth would he have sex with her on the night of the incident? Let me repeat that. If they return from North Carolina and he rejects her, right, Why on earth would she return from Arizona and she's quite sick and it's very uh, late at night, right? And she's also distressed because of what's happened with the the bill from the restaurant, right? Why on earth would she want to have sex after sort of two o'clock in the morning, right? When they've never had sex um, for about seven weeks at that point, right? But I think Watts used the scenario when they returned together from North Carolina to inform his narrative, to inform his story, you know, that a couple would do that if things were still going well between them. But the thing is, they weren't. And at that point, he wasn't acknowledging to the authorities either that he was having an affair. So if he's not having an affair with anybody, well, then he would have sex with Shanann and vice versa. Now, equally, if they'd been sleeping apart while in North Carolina and they'd slept apart every night back in Colorado, do you guys know that? They slept apart every night back in Colorado. They never had sex 
any other night either. So they slept apart the night they returned. That's going from the seventh going to the eighth of August, the eighth going into the ninth of August, and also the ninth. That's a Thursday going into the tenth of August, a Friday. Remember, the Friday was the day Shanann would eventually depart for uh, Arizona, and she'd arrive back uh, on the night two days later, going into from the twelfth going into the thirteenth. That's three nights. So why would he be waiting for her in bed, sleeping in bed, or wanting to have sex with her when he wasn't in her bed or in that bed at any point during the, the, the days when he'd arrived back? I suppose you could say he was in bed only to be kicked out. But you've also got to imagine when, he's, when Shanann was away during that weekend, where is what's going to be communicating with Kessinger from? And I don't know if you remember, Kessin just said um, she didn't think that he was in his bedroom. Do you remember that? Now, in my analysis, what's killed Shanann in a very primitive way of looking at it so that he could stop her and him from having sex again or from ever having sex again? He wanted to have sex with Kessinger and wanted her to be able to have sex with him. And so Shanann would be a sort of jealous female lion now that the ex-mate now the ex-mate in that dynamic. And if you want to take the animal thing further, if you think about um, the situation where Watts and Shanann have a, have a child, uh, you know, they have a child on the way, but Watts actually wants to start a family with Kessinger and she wants to have a child with him. Well, in the case of lions, lions will sometimes... Lions will sometimes kill their young in order to be able to procreate once again with a female. One wonders whether some kind of animalistic aspect like this is at play here. But if that seems overly simplistic or a bit of a stretch, consider what's his sleeping habits going all the way back to July 2018. Watts would later admit to spending every night at Kessinger's house while Shanann was safely away in North Carolina. And bear in mind, he's also got to sort out the vivant so that she's not going to be alerted to where he is. He's also got to return every night to fetch his truck. So he's taking her vehicle, but then collecting his truck from um, 2825 Saratoga Trail. And so he's also figuring out how to use vivant to cover his tracks. And also every night Shanann would find out that what seemed to be tired or going to bed early or generally not available. And you've kind of got to wonder why didn't Shanann sort of uh, confront Watts with this during like a five-week period, you know. She had five weeks, if you add that up, it's 35 days, 35 opportunities, 35 nights to say, what is going on with you? And the answer is she did confront him. But each time he sort of wiggled his way out of it. Shanana actually mentions in her text to Sarah Nudd that she sent 12 text messages to Watts asking him to talk to her over the month. Those are her words, over the month. And that's a reference to July. And she even gives us the time. She says uh, uh, 7 slash 8. So by 7 or 8 p.m. every night, her husband was routinely not available. Well, what do you think he was doing during that time? As many of you know, I followed these patterns in, from the phone data review minutely in my hashtag two years ago today CW series, which is still available as a 50 episode playlist on YouTube. So if Watts had spent every night in July with Kessinger, culminating in the dreamy, sweaty, sticky camping trip to the Great Sand Dunes, and also what's his love letters to Kessinger after that when he left, saying he was addicted to her, addicted to the sex as well, then obviously the moment they arrived home, Kessinger was going to want him with her, and he was, going, he was also going to want to be with her as well. Well, who would be in the way of that? And so for the first time on the night of August 8th, Kessinger would get a clue about the real state of the Watts marriage. She would want to know whether Watts and his wife were sleeping together. And if they weren't, where were they sleeping? Where was he sleeping? Where was she sleeping? 
It was one thing to sleep in separate beds or on the couch in North Carolina. I suppose one could blame family members or not being able to sleep or not feeling well. But back home, there was nowhere to hide. Not only that, Watts was starting to realize that he couldn't have his cake and eat it. He was going to have to do something. He couldn't just stay married to Shanann and have an affair on the side. That wasn't going to be enough for Shanann or for Kessinger, and he probably decided on August 8th it wasn't going to be enough for him either. But the big problem was still the baby. And as much as everyone insists that Kessinger knew about the baby, I don't think she did. I just don't think she did, simply because she wasn't on Facebook. So if Chris Watts deleted his Facebook, Kessinger didn't because she didn't have one to begin with. Now, I know this because I wasn't on Facebook for about two years. And if you've not been on it yourself, I don't think you would know this. You wouldn't have experienced it firsthand. And although I could look at things without being on Facebook, I very seldom did. Because Facebook always interrupts your browsing and asks you to sign up. So I think it's a big assumption to think that because you're on Facebook and know and see a lot, that someone who isn't would do the same. You might see a picture here and there, but you certainly wouldn't get a seamless, streamlined view of Shanann social media the way that um, someone who is on Facebook would. The other thing about August 8th that's worth highlighting is it's the first time he sees Kessinger again after the six-week affair was interrupted for about a week. And he doesn't just see her at work. Because of the ruckus at home, Shanann has actually told Watts not to come home until he's ready to tell her the truth. Do you think he is ready? Do you think he's ready to say, Shanann, I've been cheating on you. Shanann, I'm having a, a, a relationship. Shanann, I can't stay married to you. We have to get divorced. This actually gives him the excuse to go to Kessinger's home on the 8th. And he does arrive home late on that particular night. And the truth is, his libido is on fire, but not for Shanann, for her. Although it's not in the discovery documents and not mentioned in this hashtag two years ago today analysis either, we'd later find out a lot more about Watts' visit to Kessinger's home on August 8th. And so there's a clip from Cheryl and Cadle's book, Letters from Christopher, which he actually talks about him not being intimate with Shanann during that entire week. That's when they're in North Carolina. And she also gives some interesting insight there that he did this so that he could disappear, so that he could talk to Nikki for hours on the phone. So you kind of get the idea that Nikki is trying to maintain a hold over him, but also that he wants to talk to her kind of thing. This is while they're in North Carolina. And this is quoting from Letters from Christopher. Quote, when he, when he returned from Colorado, that is Chris Watts, he went to Nikki's, that's Nicole Kessinger, using his work truck. That day, so he obviously went straight from work to her home. That day, that's August 8th, Nicole gave him a key to her place and she withheld that information from the FBI that she ever gave him a key to her house. I think it is mentioned in the discovery, something about... Uh, Jim having a key. I think that's that's mentioned somewhere. Anyway, she told Chris that she was ready to take the next step in their relationship. And so um, he told her that he, he would be moving forward with the separation, you know, that the divorce was imminent. And so he promised that their relationship was going to end soon, even though he'd actually not quite even, he, not, he hadn't really even spoken to Shanann uh, at length about what was going on. And so he leaves that discussion for the um, scenario on the, on the sort of morning of the incident. He never speaks to Shanann. He can't speak to Shanann. But then in the absence of Shanann, with Shanann no longer available to speak for herself, he takes her voice and says, we have this proper, reasonable conversation about our relationship. And they cry, and Shanann accepts it, and then they going to get divorced in a civil way. Well, do you believe that? Now, as I say, this clip is from Sherilyn Cadle's book, Letters from Christopher. What it shows is on the first day, Watts is back in Colorado. While Shanann is kicking him out of bed, Kissinger is offering him a key to her home. 
he's serious about Kessinger, but until this moment, he's not sure if she's serious about him, but now he is. And Kessinger is serious about him as well. You must also wonder, if Kessinger did know about the pregnancy, did she know Shanann was pregnant with Watts' child? Would she still have given him a key to her place? Would you? And if you say yes, well then, why not give it to him earlier or a long time ago? Why not give it to him before he left to go to North Carolina? Why now? Why at this point? Obviously, by August 8th, Kessinger was feeling insecure about Watts, that he might be going back to his wife now that she was back in town. Now that he was back in town, would he be staying at his home or coming to hers and her bed? Well, the only way that was going to happen is if the divorce was fast-tracked. And she thought it was, he told her it was, but was it? Well, Shanann was about to do their affair a huge favor by offering to leave town again. This sent another message to Kessinger that what Watts had told her was true. Shanann wasn't interested in her husband or the marriage. Shanann wasn't trying to save the marriage. That Shanann was the one withdrawing from the marriage, not him. That was how it appeared to Kessinger because that's what she was told. And she was told what she wanted to believe. And she believed it, but she also wanted to believe it. In the very same way, in order to get Shanann to leave for that final weekend, Watts had to reassure Shanann that actually everything was fine between them, that he'd go to couples counseling, he'd read a book, he'd write her a letter, and he'd go away with her on a romantic weekend together. She could also go ahead with the gender reveal as soon as she got back from Arizona, all things Shanann wanted to hear. And so ask yourself this question. In the Watts case, to what extent have you believed or been fooled by what you wanted to hear? Don't answer me, answer yourself, because to the extent that you believed what you wanted to hear in this story, do you believe what you want to hear in your own story? And do you see what happens, how dangerous it is when you don't think critically and when you won't think carefully about yourself and those around you? In my opinion, that lack of critical thinking didn't start for Shanann and Chris Watts in the summer of 2018. It didn't start in the first week of August. The bankruptcies were part of the fabric long before that. The living large and beyond their means was something that ought to have been addressed a lot sooner. And both of them signing up to having a third child in those circumstances was the height of naivety from both of them, but especially his side. Him choosing to have a child and then choosing not to have one when it suited him is a mirror to his changing confessions and his selective reality. Eventually, reality catches up, no matter what words you try to throw at it. So I'm not going to take it further than that. I will um, put a as a pinned comment the source material, the blog that I wrote that really has all the information and I really didn't touch on uh, the very crucial text that was sent on this particular day between Shanann and her friends and one's got to wonder, did Chris Watts see those texts and did, is that also why something clicked in his mind? Because there's a lot of pretty harsh language and pretty unkind sentiments expressed in those texts as well. Did Chris Watts see them? So uh, have a look at that and I'll see you guys next time.